when he turned his back from shoulder to shoulder it looked like as wide as the tailgate of a truck and this darkness literal darkness just came like all over just just all over me except where i was standing this thing let out the most blood curdling mind blowing spine tingling scream that you've ever heard in your life and it cut through me like a knife and I knew that they were going to take me. I just knew it. And then the next thing I can remember is being levitated. Well, when I look in there, uh, I see two big eyes staring back at me. Hello and welcome. You're listening to The Bump Podcast, a place for the believers of the unexplained, monsters, and paranormal. Join us, and we'll go face-to-face -face with what goes bump in the night. Hey there, Believers. I got a great episode for you today. Um, today I'm bringing on Jason, and he's listening to some past episodes and thought that, you know, he's had some experiences that can kind of relate. He's had over a dozen different paranormal experiences that uh, he wanted to come on and talk about today. This is Jason's first time doing any kind of uh, podcast or sharing any stories even. Let me adjust my mic a little bit here. Um, yeah, it's, it's his first time doing this stuff, so he's a little bit nervous no reason to be uh this couldn't get any easier you know what i mean we're just sitting around shooting the breeze but yeah he also lives in kentucky which ties into a lot of the past stories and uh a lot of other investigations that are going on around you know around appalachia right now so i look forward to, to digging into this with him and seeing where it leads and maybe we can get some answers together maybe we can come up with some things that leave the listeners with something to you know to dwell on you know to contemplate so with no further ado let's bring on jason got it <clears throat> hello my name is uh jason um i'm living in bowling green kentucky uh i came on today to talk about uh, some paranormal experiences i've had and uh uh, I've had quite a few of them over the years, and and I told friends and and family and bit, and uh, you know a lot of people told me that I, I should uh, get get a little more of my story out. So here I am, going to try something new and be on the first podcast. So, um, do you want to start with just my first little experience, or yeah? Yeah, sure. We can we can start with uh, start from the beginning. And okay. while you start, I hate to do this, but I'm gonna have to go in here and get my wife off of uh, <laughs> <laughs> off of Netflix too. Okay, because mine's, mine's freezing up too. So you go ahead and get started. I can I got the volume up. I can yeah. hear you. I'll be straight back. I'm so sorry, man. Go ahead. Okay. Um, well, it started out uh, for me. I've always been into the paranormal and always enjoyed a good ghost story. And uh, I was a, the kind of crazy kid that was checking out books on ghosts and, and things like that from the library, from school, when everybody else was uh, checking out the, the kids' books. I was checking. I've always been interested in it. And, you know, I, I'm not one that jumps to conclusions on anything. I'm, I'm, kind of the type of person you got to prove it to me and I got to see it for myself, you know, to believe it. So, and going through that, I mean, I mean, I was so into it. I even had a couple hundred attractions, big haunted houses that I built and, and operated. And nice. I love doing that, love scaring people and, and, you know, making grown man pee on <laughs> me. But, uh, um, I guess starting out, the, the earliest thing I can remember is uh, I had an aunt and uncle that lived in Peoria, Illinois, and um, I loved him to death. My uncle, he was a great guy, 
uh, self-made multimillionaire. I mean, worked his, his butt off. And they always seem to have a knack of buying houses that were extremely haunted. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, and this internet because they were not those type of people. He he was a, a preacher, a former sailor, and she was just, you know, they had a, a, a oh, hold on one second. My, this internet mansion up in in Puritan Here we go. Oh, if you can hear me, hold on just one second. My okay, internet okay. is going nuts here. Let's see. Did that fix anything? Hold okay. On. Uh, can you hear me? You're still. I can hear you, but you're froze. Yeah, the same there here. There you go. I can, I can see you. Blink. Okay. Well, yours is frozen, too. Oh, no. my gosh. Here, I thought the hard part was over, just getting connected. Let's see. Yeah. Uh, all right. Yeah, you're still frozen on mine. Let me. Yeah, there you go. Now, now you look good, I think. Yep. See me now. It's, yeah, it's lagging. Yeah. All right, hold on a second. Stupid internet. Do you have frontier communications? I'll, I'll badmouth them every time I turn around. <laughs> Let's see. Then I'm going to try switching to a team in there. Terrible. Hold on one second. I got two, two lines, I guess. All right. That may work. I can see you blinking. <laughs> All right. Hey. Yeah. All right, that's better. That's better. Let's try out this. All right. No, nope, you froze. Uh, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> uh, you want me to start where I was at? Yep. Yep. <laughs> they bought extremely haunted houses. Okay. Yeah. I, I always kind of felt that I could feel something when I walked in their their homes. And um, they, uh, it, it was such an old house. It had a slave's quarters and a, a maid's quarters upstairs with a, its own stairwell. And of course, my parents stuck my nine-year-old self in the slave's quarters to sleep hmm. one night while I was up there. And uh, it, it didn't really bother me. I, I, I went to sleep fine. And, but I remember waking up at, at like two o'clock in the morning and there was light throughout the room. And it was it was an odd light. It, it was like a blue light, just lighting. I was so scared. I didn't want to get out of bed to investigate and see what was going on. And um, I I finally got up enough courage because the light was just so bright in the room. And um, I walked to the window because there was no lights on ins the inside of the house. And I walked to the window. To, to look outside and there was absolutely nothing, no street lights or anything. And it was like the entire room was lit up blue. And uh, it wasn't the most scariest story, but it, it really threw me off and I knew something was there. And there was one room in that house that I just couldn't even go into. It, it was, I don't know what it was, but it had a wine cellar in the basement that I wouldn't go. I mean, I was just terrified the whole time. That they told me stories about dogs uh, attacking them and, and the house being filled with flies. And as soon as they get to the door and, and close it and then open it back up, all the flies are gone and just just crazy stuff like that. But that it kind of got me more interested in. So, I mean that that kind of led me uh, to an adulthood and. It was a typical story, you know, a young family with young kids buys their first house, you know, and it's a little farmhouse way out in the country. And, and I mean, it was just, it was so perfect 
for for us and and starting out you know it was a cheap old farmhouse that somebody gave us a good deal on and you know we move in and everything's fine and uh, my daughter was about three years old at the time and uh she typical good kid and here comes my son nope it's a dog typical good <laughs> kid <laughs> the dog opening the door um not a ghost but uh, <laughs> he uh she uh was playing and running up and down the stairs one night and it was kind of getting on my nerves and she was just back and forth running up and down the steps and um I was like what are you doing you know I kind of lashed out a little bit because it, it was making me mad and I was like what are you doing and she said I I'm playing I'm like what are you playing there's you know you know you don't have any toys she said I'm playing with the ball and I was like a ball up and down the steps so I was like what ball where's the ball and she was like right there and she pointed up and I'm like what are you talking about there's no ball you know and she was like the shiny ball right there and she said see there it goes and it, it takes off she takes off up the stairs after it. and she gets to the landing and she stops and giggles for a minute and she she comes back down and she said it's going down and she followed whatever it was down the steps and she did that about two or three times and you know i don't i don't know what i was thinking but i was just like okay whatever <laughs> and that, that was the end of that i was like okay but um the story with the house was uh i bought it from uh, uh, an in-law of my ex-wife's and um his mother had passed away in the house and I didn't, I didn't really care about that, you know, and I didn't get a bad feeling when we first moved into the house or I didn't get anything negative about the house. So it was all cool. Well, probably one of the two scariest stories for me in this house was me and my ex-wife had, had split up years later and, um, we had split up and there was a lot of, you know, tension and fighting and, and stuff like that. A lot of high emotions. And I, I believe that it's or, or whatever you want to call it, you know, when emotions are running high and um, I'm sitting there one night by myself watching TV, um, me and my dog, I had a big lab at the time, really passive dog, didn't get excited much. And we, it was a country farmhouse, so, you know, we had mice in the house. It was just part of it, field mice. But we're sitting there one night watching TV in the bedroom, and my dog jumps up and just starts losing his mind, just barking, growling, hair standing up on the back of his neck. Mm -hmm. And I, he was looking at the direction of, like, a dresser that uh, was to my right, and I was like, what are you doing? And I was like, shut up. You know, I'm trying to watch TV. And I kind of stuck my foot out and touched him on the button, just kind of pushed him towards, you know, whatever to, to shut him up. Well, when I did, he almost bit my leg off. Mm. He, he just like freaked out and was like, just going crazy on this one spot. Like I've never heard a dog do that before in my life. Right. And, um, I stood up. I'm like, shut up. I was like, it's probably just a mouse. What are you doing? And and I just kind of touched the dresser uh, that was close to where he was looking. And, you know, usually if you do that, a mouse will run out or something, you know, whatever. Right. But nothing, nothing run out. So I was like, there's nothing back there. I was like, what are you doing? And I stepped around in front of the dog to where exactly where he was barking at. And I, I'm a Christian man. I believe in God and this is a percent the truth. And, but it, this was, I, I can't, I can't even hardly explain it. It was like I stepped into the Antarctic wow. and was being stabbed with a, a thousand pins and needles at, at the same time. Yeah. Just the second I stepped in front of him and I'm 45 years old and I've never felt anything like that in my life. It, it literally took my breath away. Hmm. And I knew that I was standing inside of something and 
I, I literally froze for a second and couldn't move. And I was just literally with my mouth open, just, oh my gosh. And as soon as I, I got enough strength, I stepped out of it. And the second I stepped, I'm moving my dogs again. Um, <laughs> as soon as I stepped out of it, I was totally he'd come over to me and started, you know, trying to hug up to me because he was scared to death. Yeah. And I never, I had that dog for probably 10 years and I'd never seen him act like that, not to an animal, not to anything. But the the main thing that shook me to my core was the way it felt. As soon as I took, took one step into that position, it was just unbelievable. But I, I never felt like a, a dark presence with it. Right. You know, I, I feel like it was the the old lady that had passed away in that home was, you know, trying to comfort me or something because I was pretty upset that night. Yeah. She was saying she was here or, or what have you. But that was definitely not the way I wanted her to do that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no doubt. Yeah. But uh, I, I'm really after that, I. It was a little while later that, um, I'm sorry, I'm looking at my notes trying to remember everything. Okay. Um, the other experience that I had in that house uh, was the first time that I, I felt like I was ever touched by any kind of spirit or anything. Yeah. And it, it was a little while after that, and I was kind of shook by that anyway. Well, I'm laying in bed. Uh, it was in the morning time and I hadn't got out of bed yet. My kids were with, uh, their, their mom. And, um, so I'm laying there and I just started waking up, you know, you can, it was really a lot of windows in the room and it was really bright. So I could see the light, you know, and I, I don't know, I guess I've always kind of been scared of the dark. I always kind of slept with the covers up to my head. So they were partially, blocking my head and I hear uh I hear somebody say daddy and it sounded like it was in the other room and it sounded like my daughter and it was identical to my daughter's voice and I heard her say daddy and I, I just thought oh, oh cool the kids are home you know so I'm, I'm just laying there I, I was going to play possum in the bed for them to come wake me up and I heard her say daddy again. And, you know, I'm just laying there acting like I'm asleep. And I felt some, I felt something move on the bed. And I felt a hand touch my back and, and you know, gently stroke my back two or three times. And I, I, I swear it was, <laughs> this is the truth. It, it stroked my back about two or three times. And I pulled the covers up and turned around, expecting to see my daughter, who was probably six at the not not a thing. Oh. And I'm I'm just like I, I I didn't know what to do. Yeah, man. <laughs> was, no. uh, another one of them deals. I was shook to my core because yeah. it touched me, you know. And I always thought listening to stories people were crazy saying something touched them you know zach baggins on tv <laughs> you know, you know. yeah i i don't believe in it but it, it touched me two or three times on my back just like and it felt like a human hand it wasn't cold of course i had a layer of covers on me so i don't mm. know but you know it was just, but it wasn't like malevolent or whatever. It wasn't like an, a dark presence or an evil oh. presence. You know, it, it was, it was almost comforting. But it, when I, you know, got up, it wasn't really comforting. But oh man, you know, and I, I still to this day think it was the old, nice old lady in in the house. You know, just could have been. Yeah. Hey, if, you know, and if not, let's just pretend like it was. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I want to put this out to you. This is kind of difficult for me because yeah. in the past, 
ghosts and demons and spirits. And like I said, I, I had the haunted houses and I had ghost hunting equipment and I, I love doing that kind of thing. But I was young and dumb and doing some bad stuff in my life. And what, now that I got older in the past, you know, 10 years, I, I've gotten a lot more religious and, and you know, got back closer with, with God. And I kind of got away from doing all that. I sold the haunted houses and, you know, I got away from doing that kind of stuff. I even sold my ghost hunting set. I w wasn't happy about that, but I did. But, uh, you know, I got away from it, but I listened to uh, one of your shows. Uh, I think it was February 22nd. And the guy on there, I, forgive me, I forgot his name, but he was talking a similar story, you know, how he had been into it and then got away from it as he got closer to God. But yeah. now his faith was kind of bringing him back to it because he had a, you know, a, a comfort with it that he could protect himself. Yeah. And I don't know, maybe that's where I'm at, but, you know, I started listening to you guys. I, I heard you on Sam Tripoli's uh, Temple Hat. And, Thank you. Uh, and uh, I was like, I'm going to check this guy out and, I've been listening ever since. So. Man, I'm glad you did. Yeah, I, I enjoy the show. Uh, but um, after shortly after that, um, I sold the house and, and moved and started dating uh, another woman. And um, we uh, moved in together. It, it was, oh, wait a minute. Before I get that far, yeah. I got to tell you another story that happened to me at the, the original house. Yeah, this is not ghost related, but I believe one thousand percent it was UFO or, or otherworldly. Hit me with it. I I'm laying in bed, three o'clock in the morning. I wake to my single pain. We froze up. Hold on. Madeline in the house. We're good. We're good. Good. Yeah. I wake up at three o'clock in the morning to the windows jarring in my house, just absolutely sound like they're getting ready to break, just vibrating. Mm. And I, I recognized the sound because I was in the military for a brief period of time and it was a heli sounded like a helicopter. Right. But it was so loud and vibrating so hard on the house. I was like, this helicopter is crashing into my house. It's got to be 10 foot above my house. Wow. I'm like, what in the world? So I had an exterior door in my bedroom right by the bed. So I jump up, jerk open the door, and I live out in the country, big valley. You could see for miles in every direction. Well, as soon as I opened the door, I noticed the entire yard is red, like a red light shining down. lit. And so I know how lighting works, and I know what kind of power you need for that to happen. And then I'm like, oh, my gosh, this helicopter is right over my house. And I look up and I don't see it. <laughs> but then I look what seems to be probably five miles away in the air is that red light. What? And this red light is lighting up the entire valley. And I'm, I'm talking, no joke, probably a five mile radius is lighting up the entire valley and it sounds like it's 10 foot above my head and i've been around chinooks i've been around blackhawks i've been around uh1 hueys you All know right. none of them are that loud you know unless they're very close to you yeah and it looked like it was five miles away and it's still vibrant you know, just shaking everything. And I just watched it for several minutes and it just slowly crept and passed down over, over the hillside, which was miles and miles away. Right. It, it traveled super slowly and the light never dissipated. The light never dimmed. It, it wasn't a strobing light. There was no strobing lights on it. And it was still just as loud as it passed over as it was when it was, you know, the closest point to me, I guess you could say. Wow. And um, it, it shook me. I literally called my best friend at three o'clock in the morning <laughs> and woke him up because I was, I was so shook by it. I, and I've never seen anything like it since. Right. But, you know, maybe it, it was a very small country town and maybe it was the redneck uh, abduction scenario. I don't know. <laughs> I guess I missed my chance. But uh, yeah, that, 
<laughs> that was another thing at that house that shook me. Wow, man. Uh, did, did you experience anything else with it? Like, did any neighbor's dogs die or any missing time or uh, anything? I don't know. Anything weird? No, I don't know any cattle mutilations or, or anything right. like that that went on with it. But uh, it, it was just the lights, the sound, the vibration. And, I mean, it, it was just crazy, crazy. No military bases or anywhere close to this place. Right. You know? And it was just uh, – it wasn't really deafening sound, but it was very loud, and it was shaking my entire house. That That's insane to be that far away. Yeah, I, I'm telling you, it was three to five miles away in the air and just shaking my house. Wow. I just, I don't know anything man-made that would do that. You no, know? that don't make sense. No. But, uh, okay, back to where we're at. Um, get divorced, sell the house, move as far as I possibly can away. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and... Um, I started dating another girl and she had a son um, who was probably uh, seven at the time, I guess. And um, we uh, first we moved in to this old house downtown in, in this another small town, old creepy house. I kind of got a weird vibe going in it, but it was nothing you know, major. And we needed five bedrooms at the time because I had kids, she had kids. So, you know, it, well, she had one child and um, we needed like a five bedroom. So it was the only thing we could afford. So we got it. So we move in it and we had talked to the neighbors and they had told us some vague stories, you know, about the house was supposed to be haunted or whatever, but we kind of brushed it off. And the kids uh, upstairs, the entire upstairs was hardwood floor, old, old hardwood floor. And one room was just exceptionally creepy. I don't I don't know why there was nothing in it. It was just a, you got a creepy feeling going in. Right. Well, it was so bad that the kids want the kid that was assigned that bedroom wouldn't go wouldn't sleep in there. They put their stuff in there and they slept downstairs every night. Wow. the entire time we lived there for a, a year and we was like okay whatever you know no big deal well we started waking up to footsteps and it was usually around two or three o'clock in the morning more close to three than anything yeah. and i mean they were loud adult male footsteps mm. that was right above my bedroom just boom 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 It was one of them things where it, I didn't get up and check. And, and I'm a very security-oriented person and uh, have lots of toys and, and security <laughs> toys and stuff. And I didn't even go up to check because it was like I knew that it, uh, it's just the ghost. And yeah. I'd go back to sleep. She, we would go back to sleep. And footsteps, footsteps just over. And eventually they'd stop. But this started happening like every week you know, at least once a week. Mm. And that I didn't like, we started hearing babies cry. Oh, now? Okay. Yeah. God's honest truth. We there. You could faintly hear a baby crying oh. upstairs in the house at the same time, three o'clock, and it'd be followed up by some footsteps. You go back to sleep. 15 minutes later, you'd hear, hear it again, and it was straight up a baby cry. And I knew all my neighbors. It, it, the houses were close together, yeah. but I knew every single neighbor on that street, and there was not a baby on that street. And it followed up with my footsteps. Go <laughs> <laughs> I'll be out of there, man. Yeah, I, I did. We had to stay there, and, you know, it, it wasn't – too bad yet yeah the the baby crying's terrible but you know nobody was harassing us physically so right we kind of stayed and and just rode it out for the year but as soon as the year was up we got out of there yeah man but uh, yeah i don't know if you ever heard a baby cry that ain't yours at three o'clock in the morning but <laughs> no it's it's not a good sound no I, I hope i don't ever hear that that's yeah uh -uh. yeah 
So then it, get, it gets worse with the scenario with her. But we, we leave that house by a brand new house, brand new, first people to live in it. So we're like, yes, no ghosts, you know, nice. awesome. And uh, that was – had a big factory that we bought and, and built a haunted attraction in it. And I just recently got familiar with how the Bible talks about, you know, necromancing and don't go looking for necromancers and stuff like that. Yeah. And I didn't really know that stuff at the time. But, um, you know, by – I feel like by having that and doing that, it, it kind of led me down a darker path, maybe and invited some some spirits that didn't need to be there. But um, anyway, a long story short, a long, terrible story short, her only son, when he was 14, he died in a very tragic accident. And obviously it was very, very terrible time for her i mean just soul crushing for her because it was her only child and she couldn't have any more children and yeah so it was terrible terrible situation and uh she she was very emotional person anyway mm -hmm. and you know no no parent wants to go through that i don't wish it on anybody but it was just a terrible When that happened, some other stuff started happening that really pushed my 1,000% belief in the afterlife and, and, you know, spirits and stuff. Um, starting out, you know, we were both very upset and emotions were high and we got through the original part, but, you know, every day was a struggle and we would walk through the house I know one time personally for me, I walked into the kitchen and actually I, I walked into the living room that opened up into the kitchen to the right, the living room to the left. And um, out of the corner of my eye, I saw a shadow figure and it looked like it was getting in the cabinet where we had uh, snacks. And the the boy, the boy's name was Cody. And he always got in that cabinet and I was always fussing at him to get out of the cabinet because that's where the snacks were. He was always eating snacks. Yeah. And as soon as I walked in, I saw him out of the corner of my eye getting in that cabinet. And I literally turned and almost said, Cody, get out of the cabinet. But as soon as I turned, obviously there, there was no way there, mm -hmm. but you know, I, I straight saw that out of the, my peripheral vision. Wow. And, um, so that, that was kind of odd, but, um, uh, and like I said, I, I'm a master electrician, been doing it for a very long time, for decades. We started having electrical issues in the house, pretty much contained to his bedroom. She left his bedroom all like it was, nothing, all intact. And she would go in there at night and, and cry and bawl and, you know, and she would tell me about the lights would flicker when she would did that. And I was like, yeah, okay, whatever. And finally one night I was really upset and I went in there and sat on his bed and I, I was crying and it was almost an intelligent response that you could talk and ask questions to him. And as soon as you ask the question, the lights would flicker. Wow. And this is this was a brand new house. There was nothing wrong with the bulbs. There was nothing wrong with the electricity in the house. And it was almost an intelligent response every single time. And the more upset that she was or the more upset that I was, the the more intense the response would be. Mm -hmm. And you know, I I believe that spirits can devices, you know, signals, radio signals, you know, your ghost hunters use it on TVs with the, the radio signals. Wow. And I, I fully believe that they can do that. And uh, I was I was telling my buddy the other day that I believe that when a loved one passes away, I feel like they have a certain period of time that God allows them 
to try to comfort the ones that loved them the most by doing certain signs and stuff like that. Two of the most incredible things I've ever experienced in my life happened because of this situation. We're, the first time it happened, we're sitting in the living room um, of the house and she's crying upset, which obviously that was a daily occurrence. And she was unusually upset this day and just crying and wailing out to God and wailing out to her son. And she she would always beg to show me a sign, show me a sign. Well, this day, she, Cody, please, if you're okay, show me a sign. And my right hand to God, the second she said sign, the transformer blew off the pole outside our house. Oh, wow. And I'm not exaggerating. It was a huge explosion. Power goes out. And we're just sitting there dumbfounded and eyes wide open. I mean, it was the second she said, show me a sign. I was sitting right beside her yeah. and it exploded. And she, that's exactly what she did. Your smile right there. Cause she <laughs> knew it, it was him. She smiled. Oh my gosh. You know, we were overwhelmed. We were kind of happy, but we're still amazed. You know, hours later, the utility company comes out and gets it fixed and, and put, gets it restored and and she was okay for the rest of the night right. well normally i would brush that off you know okay freak thing whatever i i can't remember the exact amount of time it may have been a couple months later we're at our our warehouse where we had the haunted attraction and it's the last night of the season um we're getting ready to open up in probably 30 minutes so all our actors are in there everybody's in costume everybody's standing around talking area where she was and she was upset again that night and she was crying and, and you know everybody was standing around and she did the same thing Cody if you're okay please give me a sign please give me a sign and I was standing two feet away from her the second she said sign three transformers blew off the pole what? at our haunted house I swear to the good lord above Oh my gosh. The second she said sign, it happened again. And yes, there was a microscopic storm that was going through. I'm not going to pretend there wasn't. Right. But I, it, it was like the old Wiley e. Coyote cartoons. There was one single cloud in the sky <laughs> over top of our haunted house. Yep. And the rest of the town was clear. And lightning struck that pole and blew three transformers off the pole. Oh my gosh! The second she said it, dude, I and that was it. I was like, okay, it, it's one hundred percent real, you know. Yeah, man. And the utility company came out for that. It we had to close that night. We couldn't even open because they they said they had never seen three of them blow at one time. <laughs> One or, or maybe two, but it blew all three of uh, that three phase service. It blew all the transformers up. Wow. So, yeah, that was just insane, insane. Mm -hmm. But continuing with that situation, I mean, I, we were in the house one night and she was taking a shower and I was in the living room and I hear her taking a shower and I hear the water shut off. I hear her get out, and then she lets out the most blood-curdling scream. I've, I've never heard her scream like that. And I'm like, ah, oh. and I jump up, run in there, open the door. And, of course, she's like every woman. She took 137-degree showers. Wait. And uh, <laughs> the, the entire, entire room fogged up, and we had big, giant mirrors up, you know. And in the upper right hand corner of the mirror, these initials wrote in the fog on the, the mirror. Oh, wow. I, I swear. I, I swear. And number one, she was very short. And this was in the top corner of the mirror, which she could not possibly have reached. And 
I know she wouldn't have done it to herself and then screamed. You know? Right. Yeah. She she was an emotional woman, but she didn't put on. You know, right. she did fake stuff, and it right there it was, and it, I just stopped in my tracks. I was just like, wow. Yeah. Blown away. And it, it's like I said, that kind of affirmed my belief that you know when loved ones pass, that they have a certain period of time that I feel like they can try to comfort and try to get you through, Yeah, you know, in extreme circumstances. Same thing happened when, when my father passed away. Um, I didn't personally experience anything, but my mother, um, she was still living at the same place after he passed away. And she had all kinds of experiences, seeing him, hearing him, my dad was a, a, he literally smoked for 72 years. So he was, <laughs> had an extreme smoker's cough. Yeah. And, and she would hear him clear his throat, you know, all the time after he'd passed away. Yeah. And, and she eventually, we had to get her out of there because it was, it was tormenting her. Man. So how do you think this all works, Jason? <laughs> that's the that's the billion dollar question man. it is man and you know i have had a million different ideas mm -hmm. but i just don't i don't know I'll, yeah. i i don't either and i feel like it's it's kind of a stupid thing to say but it kind of goes into something i, I may talk about later but it's like a ouija board yeah and I always wondered, I had this question in my mind my whole life, how can an $8 cardboard and piece of plastic from Milton Bradley conjure the devil? I mean, how, how does that work? You know, <laughs> you can buy it at Walmart. How does it conjure the devil? Yeah. But then I heard somebody talking about it, and it's not the board itself. All right. It's your it's intent. You, your intent. You asking them to come in. If you're doing bad things in your life, they don't have to be the most evil things in the world. You know, you don't have to be killing or raping or, or doing heavy drugs or something like that. But I believe if you're doing bad things, then you're going to attract bad spirits in your life. Because okay. once, once I got better faith and, and closer to God, you know, I, I don't really have experiences like this anymore. Yeah. And, you know, I don't know. If, I 100% believe in God, and I 100% believe that he can, you know, keep the spirits at bay. But, you know, I feel like that's the what's happened for me anyway. Yeah. But um, I'm trying to look at my notes here. Hey, you're good, brother. Uh, I got two, two more things I'll talk about. Okay. Um, one thing happened to me. Uh, me and my ex-girlfriend – separated uh i met the love of my life i'm married to her now best woman i've ever known and we've been together almost 10 years now and we uh bought a house or rented a house is a newer home subdivision you know nothing and i this was like totally random i'm laying in bed one night about three o'clock I, I wake up still to this day at three o'clock on yeah. the dot constantly and it drives me crazy but uh woke up at three o'clock and the way my bed was situated i was closest to the door the door was open and it was all all dark well i, I kind of halfway get woke up and i'm looking to my right where the door is and kind of behind the door i can see this figure standing there and I can't make out anything about it other than it, oh, it froze figure. Okay. And I'm, yeah, and I'm half asleep. So I'm, I'm like, what? And uh, my wife's uh, daughter at the time was about that size. And I was like, oh, that's, that's Kaylee. I was like, why, why is Kaylee up at three o'clock in the morning? And why is she in our room just staring at me like that? You keep and falling I, for this. <laughs> yeah, I keep falling for this. And I'm like, what the heck, man? And um, so I'm I'm trying to focus my eyes in on it. And I'm like, well, it's not moving. I was like, maybe it's just clothes hanging on the door or something that I didn't know were there. 
Well, then I saw it start moving. It was very slow. It wasn't nothing creepy, <laughs> you know, like you see on TV, the grudge or anything. But uh, it was just a slow, gentle movement. And I was like, oh, OK, it's moving. And then something just told me, go back to sleep. <laughs> Man. Yeah. I've and, and that's what it said. It said, go back to sleep. And again, in my high security atmosphere, I just went back to sleep. Yep. And that just seemed to make sense to me at the time to just yep. go back to sleep. That happens to every single person. Yeah. Every person. They said they'll wake yeah. up, you know, and there'll be something over them in the bed that says, go back to sleep. Yeah. They do. They do. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, this was the creepiest thing I'd ever seen in, in real life. And I'm just like, ah, oh, yeah, don't worry about it. Go back to sleep. Yeah. And I literally, I think I did hear somebody on your show talking about it. That uh, They saw that ball of light over their kid or, or something yeah. in the middle of the night. And they're like, yeah, go back to sleep. Yeah. <sighs> it, it's true. It, it happens. But Man. I saw a few black figure and I just decided to go back to sleep. <laughs> but moving on uh, to the last thing that I could tell you about, uh, me and my wife now, we started another haunted attraction in a little bigger city and yeah, big warehouse that we bought. And it was the weirdest thing because the it was like a factory way out in the country in the middle of a residential area, completely one whole side surrounded by thousands of acres of really dense woods. It, it's just a really odd location. Nobody even knew it was back there. Nice. So uh, yeah, I'm like, this is kind of cool. Well, it, it come on a three acre lot. And um, when we bought it, the, the back two acres was just extremely thick woods, steep hill, extremely rocky and overgrown so I never did even really go back there I knew generally what was back there was just wood so I didn't even go back there when we bought the place and uh the first time I got went back there I, I started exploring and there was these just huge massive rocks all over the place and and you know nothing about the woods bothers me but I, I got that feeling again of just a, a a bad, bad feeling. And I knew that area had had a little bit of history with, uh, you know, honestly, uh, white supremacists or whatever you want to call them and, and maybe some devil worshipers or whatever. But um, I knew it had some history about it. Well, I trek on, you know, this rough terrain with these odd shaped rocks. And I come to this one that it just made me stop in my tracks. And it was literally probably the length of a pickup truck just a single cab pickup truck it was probably that long and i don't know maybe five foot thick uh, as far as height wise and i mean it was just a massive rock it had to weigh more than a truck you know mm -hmm. and it was sitting on two smaller rocks that were holding it up and you could see underneath it in the middle and the, t the top was just flat and I mean I'm not gonna say it was perfectly flat because it wasn't but right. it was really flat but something just told me that like something overwhelming feeling that something bad had happened there yeah. and uh so I'm like okay you know and I kept looking around and it was just really weird shaped rocks and and nothing really made sense and so I I just, I left it alone. I went, I went back to the building and then I'm building the inside of the haunted house. I, I went and framed up like 90 different rooms inside of it. And so I worked in there for literally a, a year straight before I opened it up and I'm in there one night and, uh, eight, nine o'clock at night. And I love music and I've always got music going. I had a big Bluetooth speaker in front of me and I'm, I'm jamming while I'm in there building. And um, the speaker is about maybe 10 feet directly in front of me. And uh, it, it's, it's not super loud, but it's loud enough. And uh, a part come on on a song that I liked and me being – Silly me, I, I kind of shake my butt a little bit. You know, I'm yeah. in there by myself, so it doesn't matter. Right. 
And uh, so I shake my butt a little bit to that part of the song. I was feeling pretty good, you know, getting work done. In the split second, I shook my butt. I heard somebody go, <laughs> just like a laugh. And it was right here on the back of my neck. Oh. And I literally could feel the wind off of it. Mm -hmm. And it was just right here behind me, right on the back of my neck. The speaker was in front of me. There, it couldn't have been a sound of the speaker. There's nobody else in the building. And it was, it was a straight up laugh. Mm. And I, I told the story to another guy today and I had chills. I, yeah, it just still gives me chills. But I mean, I, I'm a, I'm a good sized dude and I do a lot of crazy stuff. I've, <laughs> you know, been a cage fighter. I, I, I consider myself pretty tough. I made a beeline to the front door <laughs> as fast as I could walk. And I was so scared. First thing I did was call my wife. I'm like, hey, hey, baby, how you doing? <laughs> yeah, I'm just calling to see what you're doing. But it scared the living crap out of me. Yeah. And it, it was just a simple laugh. And it was just letting me know, I see you, you know. I oh, see man. And, I mean, I, I was terrified, terrified. And I, I, don't, I don't think I went back in there for a couple of days. Really? Yeah, I had to get, get up, up the nerve to, to go back in there. But... Really, I didn't have a whole lot of experiences there. Even after I got it built, you know, it didn't bother me because I was into that. But I had uh, some actors. I did order a Ouija board one time from a, quote, demonologist off of, off of eBay, I think, you know, so for whatever that's worth. Yeah. Um, and she claimed to have done some stuff or whatever. And I used it as a prop. I wouldn't mess with it, but I used it as a prop in one of my scenes. And of course, when you hire a bunch of teenagers to come work for you in the middle of the night, you know, when they get bored, they're going to start playing with a Ouija board. Yep. And sure enough, they started claim to, you know, see something or, or see a few shadow figures or something. I, I can't validate it by any means, but, Man. you know, it, it, I didn't feel comfortable after that. And we eventually ended up selling it anyway. So, you know, that, Ooh. that was the end of that. But, I mean, that's just some of the experiences I've had. And, you know, I, I feel like each one of them has their own set of meanings. And, yeah. You know, there's a lot more to this life than people, than Will Smith smacking, you know, uh, with the comedian on, on the Oscars. You know, there's a lot more to life than that. And Absolutely, brother. Absolutely. I feel like people need to get their, their stuff together and it, it's a crazy world and, you know, stop doing the bad stuff and yeah. get your life right, you know. I, I, that's exactly what I was talking to my kid about today about how we don't want to be a part of this world. You know what I mean? It, it's a, we're in the world, but I don't want us to be oh, yeah. of, of the world. Um, yeah. Let yeah. me ask you about that property you were on. Mm -hmm. um, did you ever go back and check those rocks out again? Um, or did you just kind yeah. of leave it alone? I, I tried to look into it um, because – you know, I like to investigate stuff a little bit. And on that building I, is actually when I bought my ghost hunting equipment that I was going to do tours with and go through the woods and stuff like that. But it never got around to it, never worked out. But mm -hmm. I went back up there a couple of times, but I was really leery because, um, like I said, it was really snakes all over the place. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I actually the the first day that we closed on the building, I killed a timber rattlesnake in the driveway of the building. All right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It, as if it wasn't bad enough closing on the building on Halloween. When yeah. The <laughs> but yeah, that, I didn't investigate. So yeah. nah, that's all right, man. But yeah, I don't, I don't know how this stuff works, but there's obviously, you know, it's like you, you were talking about, and I'm sorry for your tragedy with, with Cody, but that's that's proof to me. You know, I, I don't know what else proof somebody would need that yeah. there is some kind of open line of communication there 
for however it works, whatever amount of time it works. Mm-hmm. Um, and that boy must have been strong. That must have been a strong energy, you know. And when you're looking for that sign, and he's like, okay, <laughs> you know. <laughs> That's yeah, beautiful. I, I swear to you, blue, blue transformers off the pole, man. It was, <laughs> it was absolutely amazing. That would be. Yeah, but I mean, you got a 14 year old child, you know, taken down in the, the just the beginning of their life, and yeah. yeah, they got all the energy in the world, you know. <laughs> I guarantee it. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, it, I mean, it made it made me a better man going through stuff like that. It's, but it made me you know a better person and you know i i don't know it, it proved a lot to me let's just put it that way yeah absolutely well is there anything else you want to cover tonight or uh do you have any kind of business or anything you want to plug <laughs> i mean it, man let us get you know get you a- well uh, i own my own electrical company me and my wife uh, pro power solutions if anybody's in the kentucky area looking for electrical work I, i'd be glad to help you out but no 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 website no no social media to speak of you know i thought about i just haven't got there yet all right man it's all right well jason i appreciate having you on uh Thank you. I know it was a little nerve wracking at first and I know we've had some glitches on the internet, you know, it's been cutting in and out a little bit, but overall it's, you know, that's nothing. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Well, I really appreciate you sharing your stories with me. I know some of those couldn't be easy to talk about, but. Yeah. Well, I, I just wanted to get it off my chest and they're not the scariest stories in the world, but they, a lot of them scared me pretty well. So it just made for great stories, man. And it's, it's just something people can relate to. There's gonna be there's gonna be people listening, going, "Oh yeah, I, I know exactly what that feeling is. That, that icy cold feeling." Yeah, you know. You know so, but man, uh, oh, it was... I, I appreciate having you on, and just holler at me if you want to come back on the show later on. If, if you want to, uh, if you're ever over in this this side, you know, if you're ever closer to West Virginia, just holler at me, man. West Virginia, yeah, for sure, man. I, I'd love to get together, and uh, uh, if I can come up with uh, any more events that uh, happen to me, I'd be glad to share them with you. But. All right. That sounds good, brother. Well, you have a good night, and uh, I'll put the show out in about a week. All right. Sounds good, buddy. I appreciate you having me on. Hey, thanks, Jason. All right. Good night. See you.